All right, guys. So tomorrow on Saturday, wow, October 8th, we're going to be going over the GHD sit-up. We're going to use this in our regular classes as well as our competitor's class. So I thought it'd be beneficial if we just went over a few things. Um, number one, we have an adjustment here that allows our foot pad to travel in and out. And my first piece of advice for you would be kind of test the range from the foot pad to the hip or back pad and make sure that you're in a position that's going to allow um, your butt to be on the back third of the path. So for example, I know that when I climb on the GHD machine that the appropriate adjustment for me is about six notches showing. So I know when I climb on the GHD, I can just adjust that really quickly. Make sure I have six notches showing. When I put my feet in between the foot pads with relatively straight legs, I want like the head of my femur to be resting on the back third of the pad. This puts me in the ideal range position distance from the feet to the hips. At the top of the movement, we want to contract the quads and straighten the legs. And from this position, I need to be able to reach forward and tap the foot pads. So step one is kind of finding the appropriate range for you from the foot pad to the hip pad. Uh, for some of our female athletes, probably going all the way down to the floor is going to be an overreach. I know in things like the open and quarterfinal workouts, they kind of give us a target to hit. So we're going to use Eli's. Um, some med balls in class tomorrow for the females to go all the way over, touch the top of the med balls, and get back up. But really, the GHD, which stands for glute ham developer, can be used for both anterior core strength and posterior core strength. In the workout this Saturday, we're going to be using it for anterior core strength. What we want to make sure that you guys are doing when you're on the GHD is that you're not getting into spinal extension and a bunch of spinal flexion. Really what a GHD is, is you're trying to resist spinal flexion and extension when you're going over the top of the pad. And that's why it's so important that you're not actually sitting right up on top of the hip pads because it's going to put you into spinal, like excessive spinal flexion to actually get to the floor. But if you can bring the head of your femur like where your butt cheek is on the back third of the pad. Now when I lay back toward the ground, I still don't have to, I don't have to get into this massive spinal extension position. I can still keep my spine relatively neutral. So that's a big key, kind of finding out where you fit on the pad. Once you have the appropriate distance established, now we can start talking about what we do from here. So one recommendation we always have for people when they start the GHD is to only go back as far as they feel like they can actually get up. So it wouldn't be wise to just all the way down to the floor, see if you can make contact with the floor, and then see if you can get all the way up. We want you to progressively work your way down. So, you know, maybe you come down like a fourth of the way and then see if you can get back up. Then maybe we come like halfway and see if we can get all the way back up. So kind of work your way to the floor in progressions. For men, typically the standard would be to make contact with the floor. However, however in the quarterfinals workouts uh, this past year, they actually gave us, I think, a four-inch target, which is basically the height of a 45-pound plate. So all the way to the floor, all the way back up. A couple of things that you need to think about. This is not just like a core movement. You're actually gonna be using your legs a lot. So what we like to recommend people do once they've kind of figured out their leg adjustment, they've practiced kind of going down to the floor and making sure they can get back up, is we actually want you to relax your legs. So slight knee bend, we want you to relax your legs on the way down. So on the way down to the floor, I'm relaxing my legs my spine is still in a neutral position. I can make contact with the floor over the head. I'm gonna initiate the movement by bringing my elbows up and in. So up and in, 
Once I get to about this position, kind of once I've come up past the halfway point, these legs that have remained relaxed, I'm actually going to fire. So I'm going to rapidly extend my knees, and that's going to actually help me finish that movement. And that's why we say the GHD movement isn't just a core movement, it's a leg movement. So one thing that we all need to make sure that we're doing before we start doing GHD sit-ups is we need to make sure we've got our hamstrings stretched so that we can fire those quads, come all the way up, reach forward, and slap that that foot pad. So hopefully this will kind of give you a decent start of where you can start working GHDs into your workouts, and we're going to try them in class on Saturday.